Wow, wow, wow. We need to talk about Wednesday. I absolutely loved this series on Netflix. It was just so insanely fun, had an excellent gripping mystery, and the world was just both fresh and familiar, and just the balance of characters and storylines were just so awesome. I think they used the Adams family themselves really, really well, as it felt like Wednesday is a part of the clan, but they focused it so much on her narrative that I feel like the wider family just worked really, really well as supporting characters and they each kind of had their own thing going on for example Gomez's past murder Morticia's love triangle and the awesome mother-daughter relationship and Uncle Fester being on the run they definitely could have done a lot more with Pugsley for sure but I did like the fact that he opened up the series leading to Wednesday getting expelled from her eighth school and speaking of Wednesday Jenna Ortega is so perfectly cast it's just ridiculous she just embodies everything that we know and love about this character in terms of her stern mannerisms, her incredible intelligence, her disdain for everything, her superiority complex, her love for monochrome, and just all of the jokes that can go alongside this. But not only that, they also introduced a warmer side to this character beneath all of that, which I just think worked so well and just allowed her to interact on a deeper level with all of the characters and storylines. And the fact that they had so many intriguing storylines going on across the eight episode run were just so awesome. So the mystery itself as to who is the Hyde and who is their master was a little bit obvious as you just knew that Tyler getting attacked by the Hyde was a little bit of a misdirect and bringing back Christina Ritchie just meant that there were so many inevitable opportunities for her to become the main villain against Jenna Ortega's Wednesday character, which is obviously somebody that Christina Ritchie used to play, and that this would just allow for such epic sequences to take place between these two awesome characters and actresses. And Jenna Ortega's Wednesday character was just so, so, so good. I just can't compliment it enough. And I also like the fact that they had romances going on in the background with Xavier and with Tyler both being interested in her character, but she was just so focused on herself and the mystery that this kind of took her focus and priority, but you know, romances were taking place in the background. And on that, I love the fact that Thornhill, when she was a nice character, was just telling Wednesday that she's really inspiring as she is just so self-loving and is just so focusing on herself through and through and she doesn't take anybody else's rubbish and that she should just continue to be like this which I did think was actually really really nice and it was a really nice tender moment between these two characters and I do actually think that Wednesday Adams is a bit of a role model-esque type character. Now let's talk about some of the other characters. So Gwendolyn Christie's Larissa was a very cool character. I was convinced that she'd be resurrected or something, but it was so shocking that they left this character to die. Maybe she will be back next season, but I have to say this character was just so, so, so wicked. And I did think it was really interesting how they were originally positioning her as a potential other villain, especially when she shapeshifted into Rowan. But you do find out that, you know, she was doing all of that stuff because she will always put the Nevermore school first and foremost. And on that point, I do love the fact that there was so many different potential characters that could have been the villains and you're not really sure, as the Wednesday Adams is not really sure either, who she should trust and who she should not trust as well. And Thing has got to be one of the best supporting characters ever. Even though he doesn't have a speaking part at all, you're totally with him. I love the fact that he just helped Wednesday Adams so much. And not only that, he was supporting a lot of the other characters across this series. And when you're thinking that the Thing is nearly going to die, God, that literally had everybody's hearts breaking as Thing is just such an awesome character. And I love the fact that, you know, they had him and Wednesday as like, I said the two of them as a partnership was just so so wicked. Xavier was also another really cool character. If you've watched The Gifted then you may well remember this actor as he also played Andy Strucker in The Gifted which was just such an awesome underrated series. A live action X-Men series was just so 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 brilliant. But anyway let's go back to Wednesday as I will just go on and on and on talking about The Gifted. If you do want to hear all of my thoughts about The Gifted then I'll link my review for The Gifted in the comment section below. But anyway now let's look at the other love interest Tyler and he was a really cool character too but like I said before it was just so obvious that the unassuming love interest would eventually turn on her but even though it was pretty obvious it was a really cool moment at the same time
time, especially when it was so chilling when he was telling her in such a private setting that I am the one that is turning into the hide and it just felt so chilling, like I said, as Wednesday Adams was just so pushed away from everybody else in this area that nobody is really going to believe her. So she really was on her own. Bianca was a really, really cool character, although they didn't go down the conventional mean girl rival route with her, which could have been really interesting. And I definitely do feel like they could have explored Bianca a lot more. But that being said, you know, for what they did do, she did bring a cool factor to it, especially from a siren's point of view. And Enid was just such an awesome best friend, no matter how much Wednesday was constantly pushing this character away, the relationship that they had meant that there was an underlying connection between the two of them. And Wednesday, when she finally acknowledged this, and when they hugged right at the end, it was just such a nice moment. And I think it was really, really cool that Ian ate, even though she was trying to connect with other people, always she would be returning to Wednesday. And like I said, their friendship was just really, really nice. Speaking of the ending, it was revealed that Thornhill was actually Laurel, who was presumed dead from drowning, but actually, she is a descendant of Crackstone, the evil guy that killed Wednesday Adams' ancestors. And Laurel wanted to intercept Wednesday when she was going to be leaving from the station with Tyler's hide, who was going to kidnap her and they were going to use her blood to resurrect Crackstone. But instead, Laurel, played brilliantly by Christina Ritchie, was able to get her hands on Wednesday Adams before this and was then able to use her blood in a really, really dark sacrificial setting. Wednesday's ancestor who looked just like her was the one that resurrected her and it was really, really wicked, that sequence. And it was really, really cool, the fact that you're in kind of multiple different timelines across this series. So we have the present day timeline, we have the past timeline with the parents when they were at Nevermore, and we also have this super past timeline with Crackstone and with Wednesday Adams' ancestor as well. And it was really, really brilliant how right at the end, Wednesday wasn't all on her own, as actually all of these other misfits from Nevermore were working together, and all of them as a collective were able to defeat both Laurel and Crackstone. I do think that final battle could have gone on for a little bit longer for sure, but either way, it was still really, really awesome. Now let's talk about a potential season two. So it's also teased that Tyler's uncontrolled controllable hide is still looming at large and certain mysteries weren't fully resolved. For example, Wednesday's stalker, who you thought was Laurel, but maybe is going to be somebody else, especially when she got loads of those different texts when she was on her way back home. And speaking of going back home, we never saw Bianca when her mother was saying, look, I need to use your siren powers. So maybe that could even be a spin-off, but maybe we're going to explore that a little bit more if they do ever renew the series. But if they don't, I think it was such a brilliant series as a bit of a standalone limited series. And Tim Burton can take a massive sigh of relief as he really did show that he still has that magic touch even though some of his recent projects haven't been as phenomenal as he was back in the day but I love this series I feel like it had all of the Tim Burton-esque things that you would want without overdoing it and it was just such a blend of loads of different other shows and films so for example it definitely felt like an Adams Family production but also had a bit of Riverdale in there had a bit of Gossip Girl in there had a bit of Chilling Adventures of Sabrina in there had a bit of Scream Queens in there as well and it just worked as such a brilliant package and I just absolutely loved it. So well done everybody involved in the Wednesday series from Netflix and for all of the reasons that I've spoken about in this review I have to give it a massive 8 out of 10. Now I'd love to hear what you thought of Wednesday so please let us all know what you thought in the comment section below and I look forward to seeing you in my next video.